So you guys have been asking for it, kind of what's been going on in the studio, why don't you do the day in the life of, so I'm going to do one of those today. And this is the state of the 800 gallon, it's in complete disarray, but we'll, we'll feed it real quick before we start the day, it's about 10 a.m., I gotta go do a bunch of stuff, but I wanted to explain why I'm not doing the tour and that kind of stuff. Show the mess. So over here, what is this? What is this pile of boxes? This is all stuff we've been ordering in from the new studio. And we haven't broken it down and recycled it yet. We gotta take these to the shop to reuse them. We reuse the air pillows, you know? So we've got, this is a slider we bought. We bought two different sliders. We have the new supercomputer there. And then we have all of these boxes that were for lighting and things like that. So when I walk into here, this is the live stream setup. And you've got all the lights up above. You've got the big TV, you've got the camera. Same camera I'm shooting on right now. You've got the mic. And in general, we've got the, you know, the setup done. There's a spider up there. Look, right there. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. And so that's why we haven't got to a lot of other things. So we'll go get food and we'll come back. And we'll feed these guys. We'll talk about it. This room is like another bomb went off because we've got another bomb in the next room. I'll show you that. So this is the studio and there's lots of prepping going on. And so you can see there's like products and all stuff, all that wood. So there's an insane amount of wood. This is for the next 800 gallon scape. We're gonna build that island, that giant archway we wanna do, right? So I have all the wood piled up, but it's at least a one day event, if not a two day event to make that happen. This is the next product. So we needed cameras, we bought cameras. We still have the packaging because if we throw it out and we don't need something, we got to send it back. We're sending back one of the lenses, for instance. And then there's things like this, uh, this product here. I got to make sure I'm not showing off like my address with some of these return labels and stuff. Um, but right here, this is a filter I saw in China. I really thought it was cool. I'm going to uh, fully test it. That's the one of the things. So from the time I see it, it took me till now. So it took two months to get these in my possession and then I got to test them and what this does if I can show it off with one hand what I like about it is it's a reusable cartridge system so I don't know if I can show this this is why I typically don't do this kind of stuff but right in here it connects so when we pull it out you can see it's got this part right here that connects so it forces the water to the inside of this cartridge right now if I can open this bad mamma jamma up with one hand here, boom. It's got a piece of foam or sponge in the center. This is a disaster doing this one-handed. But, well, that's how that goes. Got this nice foam in the center, coarse sponge. Then it's got fine filter pads, so it goes through this, then it goes through that, forces it all the way through it. And uh, you can buy little pads replacement. We can cut to fit our own. We've got... Uh, it comes with a, a dinky, dinky intake sponge, which we would want to upgrade that if we can at the factory. If not, we got to live with it. Uh, we're testing other things. I can't, I can't get the lights to come on while I'm doing this. But over here, and we've got some tanks. There's guppies in here. We'll show those when the lights are on later, hopefully. Uh, we're testing another air pump. This is supposedly the most quiet air pump that is made. Um, but no one wants to buy it because it's too expensive, I'm told. And I'd have to sell this for something like 30 bucks. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. It's got two outlets. But how do you know if something's going to run and be quiet? You have to run it for six months, a year. So now I've had it four days. So I can't possibly bring it in until we know that. This, however, I got and I took home when I was at the show. And I realized lighting is terrible. But this is a fluidized bed filter that I think I'm going to bring in. I like it quite a bit. It is working flawlessly. And, uh, you know, you guys can look for that to come down the road. Uh, and then there's just general, you know, general mess everywhere from, you know, there's some cookies we've got from the Aquatic Experience. Then you come over here and we've got a fridge from the store. The project of all the filters, that has to happen this week. So I have to document what intake sponge, what goes in the center, like bio rings and sponge and all that kind of stuff. So that all has to get done, right? So there's that. And then this is all recycling over here. So we, 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 we go through a lot of boxes, you know, between fish boxes and you know, a printer box for Jimmy's, Jimmy's printing prints, if you didn't know that. Uh, so all that kind of stuff's going on as well. But we break it all down, we recycle it. And uh, so it's, you know, it's not 
easy for us just to get rid of it. Oh, and a little glimpse right here. Yes, I've got goldfish in the 125 there. Uh, but let's go ahead and feed, because I said that's what I was going to do. We'll grab some. I loved this, by the way. If you guys have ever seen this, when I spoke at the uh, uh, one of the clubs in San Francisco, I believe, uh, I got this postcard, and they sent it out to all their members. Great idea, I thought, but what do I know? So we're going to need, I'm just going to do something easy, one-handed today, and I'm going to do a bunch of salad shrimp. Normally I mix it up with a whole bunch of things, but we can feed later maybe. And uh, I just want to show you, we moved Ladybird into here. So the goal with this tank is we're going to take out a bunch of the, well, all the tiger barbs. And then we're going to go from there. Like, I really love the giraffe cats, but they're dominating food, like, aggressively. So let me go ahead and put this in here. So I put that in. You can see that guy is going ham on it. Everyone else is going ham on it. And then there's another giraffe cat in there that is lower on the totem pole. See some of the big clowns starting to come out. But obviously it's a feeding frenzy. And where's poor old little ladybird? Well, ladybird's back here going, Dad, I don't want to compete for food. How about you just feed me? And so I feed her separately, usually with two hands. And I hope they don't drop it and make it on the floor. But I feed her in this little hole right back here. I put it in and I wait for her to notice and it kind of sinks back to her level and she'll come out and eat. So that's a clear sign that See, we're bringing the fish in. She doesn't like that. She, she's not, she's not a fan of having a bunch of other fish around. So, I've got to obviously change what I'm doing if I want to see that fish thrive. And that fish is important to me. And so, you know, I'm thinking I got to alleviate some of the, some of the load in here, because otherwise I'm going to, have to put in, you know, 50 pounds of clams a day to make this happen. And over here, you can see we've got like the Goldie Pleco chowing down on cocktail shrimp at the bottom there. And uh, you know the clowns going nuts, and we still people always say like, you never, sh do you still have the reticulated hills cream lotus? They're still in here. It's just a big tank. That's all, you know, real big tank. I might put some more food in because she's still apprehensive here. If I can get it, oh, there we go. She's gonna get some. And uh, so I might, I might take her back out too. I might just bring in another big aquarium for her instead of. Um, getting her to live in the 800, even though I, I I look at the 800 a lot, so I like, I would like it if I did. You can see there's the other giraffe cat right there. They're getting big. And I've got the, you know, the shells are starting to grow, to not grow, but uh, like a mass in here is because we're feeding shelled foods for ladybird and clown loaches obviously love it as well. And so that's kind of what's going on with the 800 again. We're going to redo the whole thing. It's going to be in a massive project. The fake logs coming out, all the fake plants are coming out. We put this big, you know, arch in there and then we plant it with java fern and and anubias and that kind of stuff and then we figure out do these things even stay in maybe the clowns come out maybe the blood parrots come out like maybe we separate it i gotta make a decision i know the archers are staying no matter what i really kind of want the plecos to stay and the giraffe cats but that makes the tank a certain way because these guys are such pigs so gotta make that decision and if we go into the next room here this is the garage, which you guys, you know, I, I would bet a lot of you have never seen before. You've never seen my garage, even though I used to live out here. Well, not, okay, I didn't actually live out here. I don't want to give the misconception that I did live out here, but let me, let's see if I can get the, I've got more filters stacked up. These are all filters I have to analyze for you guys so you know what to get, but I got to get to, oh, I got to get to the part where I can turn a light on. Because we're in the middle of, ah, there we go. We're in the middle of the remodel out here. So what are we doing? Joel has been building like a madman. And we're putting in basically, basically a workbench. There's a table saw we can pull out. There's a workbench that goes all the way around. There's the top to the tank in my living room. And we've got shelving up above. And we're installing lighting. And what is this for, you ask? This is for the next step. What's the next step? The next step is to do projects, if we want to build a stand, if we want to build a tank. So it used to be we were absolutely full of junk in here, now we're only semi full of junk in here. And so we need to finish that wall over there. You can see it's still got the laser level up on the wall. I'm going to wrap that all the way around and uh, finish building out, finish bracing. And then we can go to town. That's the good part. You know, we've got, like I'm going to probably give this tank away because I'm just not going to use it, the Metaframe tank. 
but we'll be able to go to town building in here and have all this space for the winter. So that's part of the projects. The projects are established groundwork, you know, and that's getting all this stuff organized, getting it recycled, getting it, you know, put away, <clears throat> then move on to making the videos for you guys. And that's what we're working on behind the scenes. This isn't what I do. I don't really have that much part in this other than like helping move some stuff or uh, organizing and get rid of setting what goes. But other than that, I'm always on the computer. I'm always testing the products. And like right now today, we're gonna run to the we're gonna run to the store and we're gonna go pick up hoodies and deliver them because they go on sale tomorrow. And, but to start the day, we gotta go catch a turtle because it's cold outside. And we gotta bring it to the store. So pineapple lives in this 360 gallon tank. We're gonna downgrade her to basically a toad about that size at the shop. But it'll be heated, and we'll get a uh, UVB light and a basking. Uh, spot set up like this and all that kind of stuff, but it's too cold. I gotta catch her. I gotta put the camera down. It's gonna be cold water. Gotta get her into a bucket. Gra I'm probably gonna grab this and take it with me. Then we'll head to the store, or maybe I'll show off the ponds real quick. So here we have the the tote that's doing the uh, platinum rice fish. They bred all summer long. Didn't get much time to film them. They're very shy. Hopefully you'll see some come out into the the sun here as they like to kind of bask in the warmer water as it heats up at the top there. I can see some swimming around, but they bred, they're doing well. Um, LR Bretts is gonna come out, I think in January, and I'll probably send some home with him because I know he he wants them, he wants to breed them, sell them, so you guys will get a chance to get them. Uh, over here, this is the Daphnia pond. There's no Daphnia because it's too cold right now. But you can see, this is how dense the um, the guppy grass, or the Guadalupenchus nagus. And then there's some hornwort in there. And then there's a bunch of, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a bunch of dwarf sag also growing in there. So all that's going on. All right, so here we've got, you know, the tote set up that Joel built for me while I was out of town. And we've got the, the orange rice fish. You can see one right there by the thermometer. Again, lots of uh, uh, guppy grass in here. A lot of algae as well. The babies, I don't know if you can see them, but they're underwater back over there. There's some swimming back over here. Water temperature's getting decently cold. Uh, we're looking at 40 degrees. Water temp's 40 degrees at this point. Um, I guess I should chime you guys in on the pond, the koi pond, because uh, we just haven't had time. So let's go take a look at it. All right, so we've got the pond, it's built, it's not done. We still have a little bit more to do, but it's been very cold and raining and we'll finish it when we can finish it. You can see the koi are in here. We've got 19 koi and uh, you know, the water's a little murky and all that, but I didn't wanna, we're not doing much. I even filled it all the way because um, they were a lot pretty jumpy when we moved them. If you haven't seen kind of the building of it, it's on the Corvus Oskin channel. Joel built it. He's a, you know, he's very good at what he does, and that's building things and that kind of stuff. So you can see the koi. They would still eat, but water temp, as we just established, is about 40 degrees. So we're not going to feed them. Uh, over here, you, we're, we still got to do a little bit more uh, work. We've got the, the deck lids, if you will, to cover. We've got plumbing done, and we've got electrical. So electricals run, you know, underground all the way out to the pond, and we've got it so that. This is these are this is the filtration I already had, and I thought this will get me at least through the winter and all that. So I'm not going to invest in something. I want to see if this works. So we've got you know the first giant canister filter basically, and then the second giant canister filter. We've got shutoffs everywhere. It's plumbed as basically as nicely as we can. If we flip a valve, it pumps water. We can feed the gardens and that kind of stuff. And uh, so yeah, this is about 3,500 gallons when it's full, and uh, it's 10 foot by 10 foot by six feet deep water depth. So six feet water deep, 10 foot by 10 foot. And you can see we kind of set up uh, grow beds, like just so my wife can plant, you know, vegetables and all that kind of stuff. But the yard's still a mess. Uh, we just, we keep running out of time, keep traveling. And that's what is putting a, a damper on finishing the projects. And even like, a, you know, people ask all the time, why don't you do the daily dose? This, if you're 22 minutes into it or whatever we're into it right now, this is 22 minutes that I could have spent working on something like this or moving on to the next project and I still have to go do the unboxing. I gotta go do a round trip to Seattle and back and 
all that stuff. You're gonna see it all, but this is why I don't shoot this every day is because at the end of this, if this is 45 minutes long, that's 45 minutes that I lost on the workday. Now, I'm not saying that this isn't beneficial, documenting all this stuff, which it is, but I just want to point out that that's why I can't find the time to do it every day and do it all the time. So I'm gonna load up the turtle and I'm gonna get on the road. So I'm here at Pork Chop Press. We're in Seattle now, it's about one, and I had to pick up all the hoodies. They're loading them in. I just thought I'd give you guys kind of, you know, behind the scenes of what's it like at the place that's making all the hoodies and shirts and kind of a cool place to work. You know, we're in Seattle and this is kind of the vibe that we try and do. We're not this cool. We don't have the arcade for, you know, people to come in and play and, you know, employees or customers. Kind of has cool stuff. They've got, you know, tons of jackets and sweatshirts and shirts and everything you can put your hands on so you can go, ooh, I want this one, but I want my logo on it. And, you know, just trendy and cool. And not that trendy is a bad thing. I'm just saying it's just a cool place, nice people. Everyone, I think, is getting paid a fair wage. And everyone seems to like their job and, and all that kind of stuff. So I just thought, you know, this is the stuff I do all day long as I come and I network with people like this and go, hey, here's what I'm trying to pull off. I need a shirt that, you know, and they go, well, does your customer want something super thin? Do they want, you know, like extra, extra thin where you can see through it? Do they want a heavier weight? Are they going to want... Do they want to wash it all the time? And these guys are just experts at doing that. And I try to, you know, as you can see here, just of hoodies, you start going through and there's lots of varieties of just hoodies. And this will just be their top sellers. They probably have a thousand to choose from, you know, and obviously somewhere in this stack is the one that we choose. Like maybe it's this one. Is that a Gildan? No, we might do Port Authority actually. I'm not sure, but I, that one looks similar to the one that we do. And uh, so yeah, now that they've probably loaded it up in the back of my car, I gotta get back on the road and fight traffic and get back to the shop. We can unload them and prep them because tomorrow hoodies and stuff like that go on sale. So, yeah, back in the car we go. All right, let's see what we got today. Small bags first. Ooh, there we go. Betta macrostoma. This is a wild caught mouth brooding betta. Super low pH to breed normally, and they sell it like a couple hundred bucks a pair. All right, I'm back at the shop. I just delivered the hoodies, and I want to take a quick look at the beta macrostomas. If I'll ever focus on them. There we go. Meds are in the water. It's super cool, though. All right, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get in traffic and get beyond it before I get stuck here forever. Murphy's getting big. Check in one last time with employees and get on my way. All right, it's two o'clock. I gotta beat the traffic. I haven't had lunch yet. Hopefully this shot, shot's not terrible, but whew, I'm hungry and getting a lot done. Haven't addressed any emails or anything like that yet or comments. And uh, hopefully, so I also filmed an unboxing, which you guys wouldn't know yet, but that's why I shot, yeah, you wouldn't know about the beta macrostoma, but yeah, I shot an unboxing as well. And uh, yeah, picked up the hoodies, dropped those off. You guys are aware of that. Now we drive home, hopefully, and get there, hopefully, in about 30 minutes and get some food in me because I'm starting to get shaky on the camera because I'm holding it and I haven't eaten in, well, I ate at like nine, so been a while. So that's what, five hours? Not gonna die, but not perfect either. All right, so I'm back at home. My wife's making me lunch. I gotta eat and get everything done because I forgot that it's our anniversary. Now to our wedding anniversary because I was in uh, at the aquatic experience for that, but the anniversary of us meeting 15 years ago, so I gotta go out to dinner. And I thought I'd show off some of the tanks. We've got the cherry shrimp tank with the best guppies in the world fry that I got from uh, Twin Cities Guppies. And so that's what this 29 gallon tank's doing. Uh, this one's still the, the Blackwater Betta, you know, tank basically. If I can get to focus on those guys. But I need to hatch brine to really get them to do well, and I need to, no fertilizer goes in here at all, so the buse is looking sad, like it, it's just, you know, it, it's, stuff's growing, but we've got algae and that kind of stuff, it's, it's a time thing. Down low, I've got some blue platies. Don't know what to do with these guys, they've got way more orange in them than I like, so it's kind of, they're just sitting there. Down here, we've got lots of fry, these, so, let me tell the story, I got these in, uh, Austria at the world, or Vienna I guess, at the world uh, 
Guppy Championships. There's the male. It's a, a round tail. It's kind of, to me, like a super duper awesome different version of almost like a tiger endler. And so I brought uh, three, or no, uh, two trios back. And that was its own ordeal. But as you can see, we've got lots of fry going around here. And yeah, there's plants and there's uh, there's also the uh, the black rose shrimp, if it'll focus, focus. So I've got that, those going on in there. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of just hanging out. That's what the tanks are mostly doing. Uh, over here, I've got the, what is it, the koi tuxedo guppies. I like those, I got those from Twin City Guppies. So we've got that going on. I planted it with crypts. I'm gonna let those crypts grow in and just have it be a guppy farm. And then up top here, I need to plant them all. I bought the plants, but I haven't planted them. I uh, want to do a different kind of crypt and sword tank. And you can see there's algae on the glass here with lots of snails, but I also put in uh, filter feeding shrimp, the bamboo shrimp. Now you can see a little bit better how the fluidized bed filter is going. The glare is unbearable in here. I should, I should have turned the lights off beforehand, but I'm just trying to do this real quick. But there's that filter. If we go over here, we still have baby turtles. I'll show those in a minute. This is Jimmy's tank, the planted tank. You know, it just kind of has the Val jungle look going. That's why I always tell people, buy Val if you want to have an awesome looking tank. Like, you can see some of the other plants are a little bit neglected in the back, but from far away, this tank looks amazing, right? Like, oh wow, look at all those live plants. Look at the rainbow fish, and it's the Valisneri that pulls it off. You take that plant out of there, this tank looks way different. So, down low, We've got the baby turtles that I breed. These are the, I bought those as teacup platies. As you can see, clearly those are not platies. Those are sword tails. And so I put them in with the turtles going, ah, they'll eat their fry mostly, but the fry are starting to make it. You can see down behind the algae maybe, there's some fry kicking around. These are all the baby turtles that I have. Got the UVB light and we've got the basking spot and you know, all that going on, but the algae I just need to, you know, run the mag, oh, the mag float stuck, that's no good. I need to get the mag float free. There we go, come on. And just, uh, you know, clean it up and it's, there's the canister filter and there's all that. It's auto water changing and they're healthy and we're making babies of of the fish and all that. Like it's it's doing what it needs to do. It's, it's, it's just a real nature, like natural aquarium. You know, cause you've got algae and all that kind of stuff going on in there. But, you know, it's super duper healthy. They're loving it. And that's what's important is that they're happy and healthy and it doesn't look the best but I haven't been putting on camera so I haven't been you know cleaning the front glass I just need to get in there with the razor blade five minutes later we're done blah 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 you know over here we've got nothing this is where ladybird well no ladybird wasn't down here we're cleaning it out because that's where um, we're gonna do some other stuff in here we've got goldfish these are new to me the black one is a little bit derpy like he He's active sometimes, not active other times. Um, I've put general cure through them so far. They're eating well, so that's good. And I've just got a couple of goldfish again, algae. You can see I've got the mag float there and I just need to you know, get it underway a little bit more. But I'm not sure if they're staying in this tank yet. And so I haven't really planted it or done anything with it. I put a few rocks in there just to have something. But you know, essentially that's what's going on. The goal is to redo all these tanks. That's what I want to do. I want to redo them all and get them up to code and by up to code I mean up to my standards and all that kind of stuff and just enjoy them and that's I will be doing now that I'm done traveling. It's just been prepping and figuring out what I want to do and I've been collecting the species of fish I want down there and I have them all but now it's planting knocking down the algae starting to fertilize again and I just want to create you know, something I can't manage, you know, even in here, like the crypts did fine, but Jimmy stuck in some pogo stem in and it's like it ended up dying out because there was no um, fertilizer going in at all. So now that I can spend some time on them, I think they'll look a lot better. And uh, yeah, so now I gotta go grab lunch. I think my wife made me a sandwich and it's time for me to answer emails and get ready so that I can uh, go out to dinner with her later tonight and be ready. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of the day in the life, even though it's getting cut short a little bit. It's only like 3 o'clock right now or something like that. But, you know, obviously more stuff would happen in my day, more business-related stuff and all that, but cutting it short. So, 
All right, we'll see you in the next one. Let me know if you liked it.